Okay, in this video we're going to go over how to add internal bodies to a lofted plane. Uh, the entirety of the work here really centers on a tool called Trim with Surface. In fact, oh, need to turn on the element assembly, that's why. So to get into a place where we can actually use surfaces and trim with surface, we have to actually open up a part where at the top assembly level right now, and I want to be referencing everything to the outside of the aircraft, the outer mold line, OML. So if I right click on part six and say edit part, now it turns blue because I'm actually working inside of this part even though I'm still at the assembly level. If we turn this transparent, you can still see all the payload and passengers and cargo and, and everything else that's on the inside of the airplane. What this, what's nice about this is that you will be able to, uh, <clears throat> to center the structure right where you need it to be. So there shouldn't be uh, any conflicts you can build around things and really make sure that the structural layout makes sense given what you have to carry in the airplane. All right, so let's go back to a shaded view and I would like to turn this on to uh, change transparency, make that outside skin a little bit transparent so you can actually see the inside. It still should be selectable for the most part. Uh, hopefully that's not too difficult and we'll keep it that way going forward because that really lets the interior structure show up. So inside of this part where it's going to contain right now our outer mold line, which thankfully we just have one surfaced part based on the work of the previous video. And now I'm going to go in and let's just pick something, uh, not random, but uh, quick to start with. Uh, is that, that'll, that'll be decent for demonstration. Actually, let's do this, this'll be, this will be better. It overlaps one of the spheres. Well, I know how to make it even easier. Let's just do the top plane, do a sketch on that top plane. Still, we have the no external references box checked and we are in the component level because you can see the buttons out there. So everything gets bumped over a little bit tool wise. So don't let to throw you off. Here we are now in the top down viewers can do a sketch and this is very, very simple to make internal structure layout. Let's just do a simple, super simple wing spar place this roughly between those passengers that's where it'll pass through say okay and then the line is very boring but we can then do a solid extrusion i want this to be thin it'll thin by de uh, by definition uh, equally spaced on either side of the line uh total thickness of 0.125 so an eighth of an inch and let's go ahead and just make it very very tall in fact i wanted that to also be mid plane so that way it easily passes all the way above and all the way below the wing surfaces. So we'll say OK, create that part, and then we can finally go to surfaces now that we're working inside of a part and say cut with surface. And this is where you actually select the outer mold line. And this is also where it's so critical to have this watertight. Notice the little arrow over here on the right hand side. That indicates which direction the cut's going to be made, whether you remove the inside of the surface or remove the outside of the surface. I want to keep the inside, so we remove the outside, and that automatically trims that uh, part right down to the spar that we want. So this can be, as you've probably just realized, extremely, extremely powerful for capturing very complicated shapes that if you had to guess and check through a series of sketches or intersections or whatever else, uh, it'd be a problem. Now one thing to speak of while we're on this topic is if we go here to the very tip of the wing where it's a very you know highly cambered airfoil, you can see that there's nothing guaranteeing that these parts will be, um, what's the right word, extrusions? Yeah. So since most of these components will either be cut with a CNC or a laser cutter, a laser cutter leaves a little bit of a scorch on the side. CNC does not, obviously, because it's not heat-based cutting. Uh, that has some influence on how glues bond and everything else, but we can cover that when we get there. But for right now, the important part is that there is a slope to the side of this surface. Uh, you could certainly with a CNC or something else uh, have it compensate for that slope, but so that's not very often done. An extreme angle is okay, maybe, but it's much more convenient just to treat these as vertical walled sides, maybe cut them a bit small when you account for uh, skin thickness and other things, and then just uh, cut them out, glue them in, and be done with it. And really, for the most part, that's fine. The epoxy or whatever other kind of uh, adhesive you use to bond those in generally has some gap filling properties that lets it work out okay. But just be aware that this cut with surface tool will capture every single slope uh, that the skin has involved with it. And when you export that to a DXF to do a two dimensional cut, uh, it, there's nothing guaranteeing that part fits perfectly. Also right now, what you should keep in mind that this part has no uh, accounting for skin thickness. 
So to start with that and help that a little bit, let's go ahead and do a sketch on that surface itself going straight oblique to it. Let's hide the outer mold line for the moment. Do, do, do. Surface bodies, yep, let's hide that. So now we're just looking at this uh, rib structure. The simple thing to do would be to add some lightning structures here, or perhaps you wanted to go, you want to leave this like structural carry through solid, but you could remove some weight beneath it probably without any effect. And then maybe we can get a round work on this corner. Yeah, you destroy some aspects of the spline, but for the most part, it looks great. Okay. Yeah, that'll work. And then, of course, we'll mirror it across. Just for keeping things symmetric, using the mirror tools, definitely worth your time. Uh, that way you know beyond any question that the left is going to be the same as the right. So that's very simple. We'll just cut that little smiley face out. It's not going to be an issue. The other thing, which I guess I could do in the same sketch, is that I want to now account for skin thickness. And the easiest way to do that is going to be an offset the entity. And we we'll go out here and select one of these outer lines. And it should propagate, which it doesn't seem to have the option for here. Let's see if it was a submenu. Select chain. Yeah, maybe. Hmm, no. All right, so, well, maybe I could uh, select the face instead. Offset entities, this face. Yeah, there we go. It makes way more sense. That way you don't have to click all the way around the path. Let's reverse the direction. And now this is where you can actually enter in your skin thickness that you want. The part that was cut out of the surfaced body is going to be exactly at the outer mold line. If this was a composite molded aircraft, certainly the fiberglass, carbon fiber, core material, etc., is going to have some different thicknesses associated with it. So if that thickness was 0, 0, 008 inches, which is about one layer of carbon fiber uh, with some generic numbers I've seen, uh, then you would just enter that there and contract the exterior by some very small value and you'd be set. I would really encourage you to you know, lay up or do a sample coupon to figure out what the actual thickness will be after compaction and vacuum bagging and, and epoxy and everything else. Uh, but overall, this is the easiest way to contract the outside of a of a bulkhead. So say OK, and then you can go back and just cut that sketch out, leaving the bulkhead shape you want. So that's a really, really simple way to account for skin thickness and add lightning holes to objects or servo mounting holes or push rod pass-throughs, whatever you need. Uh, if you need them to be cut by machine, that's an easy way to do it. All right, so flip side to cut, maybe. Huh, okay, not thick enough, that's the only thing. So instead of a thickness of 0 0.1, let's just say through all, okay. All right, now it's been contracted, it's smaller. We can turn back on the outer mold line and things are looking good. So that would be, notice now that the, the uh, bulkhead actually exists inside of the outer skin. Now that looks like quite a bit of distance, but it just matters what scale you want to build the plane to and how large of a glue bead and what thickness of skin you're going to be employing. But anyway, this is the process that can be repeated a number of times. So we can actually go back to a sketch on the top surface. And we're still in part six. So we're not working in the assembly level, we're at the part level. And you can then go through and add any number of these solids. Again, making sense that you only have to do half the plane, assuming your aircraft is symmetric. For now, I'm not even dimensioning the distance between them because I'll add that later if I care to. Um, some notional spacing, some rib spacing should be thought about before you just go to town on this. Going across gaps on the surface here, well I shouldn't call it a gap. 
going across a knit in a surface should not be a big deal as long as your surface is watertight. You don't want this outer line to be so close to the wing tip that whenever you make it a real thick solid part that it would only be halfway cut by the surface. So let's put this an eighth of an inch in from the side and then let's see what kind of notional spacing we had there. 1.6, let's do two inch rib spacing. Probably means we get to eliminate one rib, but that's fine. Now ribs in a composite aircraft are really just there to force the wing skin to stay in the right shape. Uh, the wing skin is going to be where all your torsion strength comes from. The ribs don't do really anything in that respect other than keep everything shape stable. So, yeah, I guess we'll leave that 1.6 for the last one. Okay. <coughs> so in this circumstance, we'll just say, all right, we can extrude all of those at once. As thins, mid plane, uh, eighth of an inch thick. So have it very tall. Do that mid plane as well. Say OK. We can then do a surfaced cut. So cut with surface. Select like again our outer mold lines. You can see you're going to be using that surface time and time again. Watching the arrow, it appeared over here on the right hand side. It just kind of shows up wherever it feels like, I, feel, I think. Let's remove the outside and say OK. And thankfully, everything worked out fine. We're good. I think in this circumstance, we still just, yeah, we just have one solid body because I've accidentally let this merge with the previous. Uh, little spar structure we have. So let's actually go back to this extrude and edit it and uncheck the merge result box, which will now keep that. Oh, failed the surface cut. Let's see why. Ah, all bodies. There we go. It'll let, it'll keep that uh, separate. So now if you look back up here in the solid bodies category, you have eight different solid bodies. No big deal. This rib at the very root is an example of one that if you wanted that to fit in, with any real possibility of it attaching nicely to the surface, you would have to CNC this with the blue highlighted face down. Let's see if I can actually, uh, let's see here, select other, select other, too many items in the menu, can't find it. Okay. Selection tools? No. All right. Well, hide the skin. <laughs> and select inside. So if you see and see it with that face down, you'd actually be able to get a tool that's coming down now vertically. So if that was down and you're machining it vertically, the tool will be able to cut that uh, sloped face without issue and be able to bond to the outer mold line skin just fine. But overall that's just sometimes you choose to go with the easier uh, easier ribs, easier bulkheads so you don't have to worry about doing very complex machining parts. It's much easier to just throw them in a laser cutter, uh, cut everything as two-dimensional with uh, vertical lines and it's, and it's not an issue at all. Okay so that's uh, how you do bulkheads in one direction, the bulkheads in the other way you'd still again start from the top surface. So I'm doing this in the top uh, triad, if you call it that, of the top three perspectives of the part. So let's actually go to sketch at that top level, do a line that goes across. Let's see, right behind the payload makes sense for one bulkhead. Um, probably want one right in front of the tail section. Didn't quite get it in front, but there we go. You want some ribs that go into the vertical tail, but that'd be more easily defined from the side. That wouldn't be an issue. Probably one right in front of the payload bay. And hmm, need some sort of aft. Um, aft bulkhead. Put it in front of the payload behind the passengers. And this is where you can start actually giving these names. So. We've set the origin here. It's, it lies off the nose a little bit because remember we trimmed the nose back to put that nice rounded surface on. So this would be the four inch bulkhead. And it'd be not, it's preferable to dimension everything from the very front. This one would be the, uh, yeah, 12, would 12 work? Yeah, 12 works. Let's 
16.5. And you see how this makes it very easy to refer to which station you're actually talking about. 21. So it's very easy now to grab known dimensions on the aircraft. This one I need to mirror over. I just want to make sure there's going to be equal length left to right. Hmm. Need to make a center line. The mirror tool doesn't like to work with actual construction lines. It wants construction geometry lines. Okay. Do the same process. Extrude. It's a thin mid plane. Mid plane. It should work. This we don't want to merge. We'll say OK and do the surface cut. That's the inside. We want the outside. Chopped it down. Let's see if we've. Yeah, we seem to have kept all of our solid bodies. Everything's passing right through itself. And this is where it really make a lot of sense to go in. Like for example on hmm, it's interesting it took away the hide and the assembly view. If you want to go into like this bulkhead for example, do a sketch on let's actually go to the other side so we can see it most easily. And I would just say offset that face reverse by it's offset by 0.2 inches sounds good and then you can go out and punch a hole in it that easily so this would let you pass um, control rods wires whatever you need to back to the tail as you're wanting to actually fill up the aircraft so this is really a time to Think about how you're going to access components. Think about where you're going to put hatches. Like how, in this case, how would the passengers get in? If I have a motor up here in the nose, which is where I presume it would go in this in this model, how am I going to be able to mount the motor? How am I going to be able to hold it in place as I attach the screws to the front? How am I going to be able to plug in electrical wires? Where does the speed controller go so that it won't overheat? Where is my receiver held? I mean, as a finished airplane, this is actually really really bad. Um, it you know many many components are, are not listed. If you wanted to actually get this finished to a level that you could actually build and, and fly easily and call it a good design, there's much more to be done. Now, as a SOLIDWORKS instruction model, it's just fine. But uh, just consider that all of your kind of common sense aerospace layout tools and ideas uh, still need to be addressed as you're going through this. You can do everything as you'd expect with mirroring these ribs over to the other side, but keep in mind also if you're just generating 2D templates to run through a laser cutter or CNC, that you can just copy the 2D template. You don't have to actually mirror it in 3D, though that would be uh, desired for any sort of drawing package associated with this. There, depending on the type of construction used, like laying out just bulkheads like this would be ideal for, uh, for composite molded fuselages, but if you're going to do some sort of built-up fuselage, certain your certainly your structure depends much more on actual internal elements. You can do laundrons, you can do other other similar things in much the same manner uh, without any stress. For the vertical tail, I'd suggest doing the extrusion here in the right-hand plane. For the for the horizontal tail, you do it from the top down again, uh, and keep in mind how you might want to add these. You really, really need this stage to start, probably before this stage, I would say. Think about how you're going to build the airplane. Is it a top-bottom mold where you attach the vertical after the fact? Is it going to be a left-right mold where you split along this line in the middle where you attach the horizontal tail after the fact? That will change how you want to lay out these internal bulkheads. But anyway, that'll be in a future video where we're talking about molding. For right now, this is a, a good place to stop for covering internal structure and how to uh, do all the elements you need, all the skills you need to succeed therein.